A big thank you to Dan and Matt for uh, joining us today on such a wonderful, wonderful topic. Love your thoughts on how uh, EQ has changed since with the effects of uh, technology, social media, the cell phone. Um, any general thoughts on that and how people have been able to develop it? Well, it's a mixed picture. Um, let me talk first about how it matters in terms of, for example, working at a distance. Many, many companies have teams that where people are geographically distributed even around the world. And the, the brain, the social networks of the brain are designed for face-to-face -face interaction. So the more you diminish that face-to-face -face interaction, uh, the less well the human brain can adjust to the situation. The best, of course, is, um, you know, uh, let's say WebEx, uh, being able to see and hear someone at a distance, it's the second best to being with them, uh, but disintegrates. Phone is not that bad because voice carries a lot of emotional information. The worst is text only. Uh, uh, there's research showing there's a negativity bias to text messages. If you ask the sender, was that message pretty positive? And they say yes. The receiver says, um, well, it was uh, pretty neutral. If the sender says neutral, the receiver is likely to say negative. Uh, the worst uh, part of this is what's called technically cyber disinhibition. When you're face to face, your social brain tells you instantly. Uh, how someone else is reacting, but that part of the brain has no information to go on. That's the disinhibition. So it means that your your worst tendencies can be expressed. Uh, if you're really upset or angry at someone, you know, you'll sit down at your type out a text message or email and send, and you really regret it the next day. So just a little advice, never send a text or email. <laughs> Never send them when you're drunk or late at night <laughs> uh, because you're likely to have disinhibition. Then there's the question of what does this do to kids? Because emotional intelligence is learned, social intelligence too is learned in life. And um, the more time kids spend staring at a video screen, the less time they spend looking at other people or interacting with other people, which is what, what the brain assumes is going to happen so that people, kids learn how to interact. I heard a talk recently by one of the designers of the first iPhone. He said, you know, we were all 20-something single. We didn't really think about it. We tried to make it as seductive as we could. He said, now I have two kids and I really regret it. So I think we need to be more thoughtful about how much time our children are spending uh, Starting with a phone or another device, and how much time they spend interacting. The more of the latter, the better. Now, I'd, I'd add to that. There are also some studies that show if you have an organization where a lot of people are virtually connected, there are benefits to having them meet in person and work in person one or two times prior to shifting over to a predominantly virtual-based relationship. That's shown to help with a lot of the issues that Dan described of uh, misinterpretation or um, not even picking up on the cues that you would otherwise learn from being in the presence of another person. Thanks for adding that, Matt. Yes, it's true. If you do something well, then you don't have that negativity bias. <laughs>